Early morning is the best time to fish along the river Niger in central Mali. And as usual, the Nabo family set off in search of the day's catch. It's usually easy to find fish like tilapia and carp when the Niger Delta floods during the cold season. But this hasn't been the case lately. In the past, there was enough water, so even if we fished only during the cold season, it could sustain us during the hot season. But now, even in the cold season, there aren't enough fish. This is because there isn't enough water and also because there are a lot of fishermen with lines and traps that catch even the small fish and prevent the small fish from growing. Adama and his family, like most people in this part of Mali, are nomadic and follow the yearly floods of the Niger River across the Mopti region three times a year. The fishermen arrive here on the shores of Lake Debo in April when the floodwaters subside. They stay here a few months until the lake dries up and then move on in search of more fish. It's a way of life that has been passed down from generation to generation for as long as many here can remember. <laughs> But as families move from place to place, children like Adama's daughter, Aiseta, seen here playing in the middle of the circle, can't keep up with their schooling. However, all this could be changing with the development of mobile schools, which follow the nomadic communities from place to place. This school in Chialde was one of the first, set up in 2007. Garbia Teminta has been teaching here for two years. He now has 54 pupils. They come to the school before it starts. Sometimes they are here at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. and it's them who wake me up. They say, sir, it's time for school. So I see that the children are very motivated in the camp. Here the children are taught in their native Bozo language and not French like in other Malian schools. Today, they're learning how to identify sounds. This school and the other 13 mobile schools in the region for fishing and herding communities all have curriculums relevant to nomadic culture. Most of the curriculums used in the rest of the country are created overseas, so they don't take into account local knowledge. If the children don't see the link between their classes and their reality outside, they will attempt to leave school. Aiseta and the other students are also learning their numbers. When I started school, I didn't know how to read or write, but now I know how to read, write and count. No one had been to school before this school here was established. Now the parents told me that they are satisfied, because if they need to write down a telephone number, their children at school can do it. The school also encourages parents to get involved, and those who want to help the school manage its administration affairs attend regular meetings. The children we send to school learn faster compared to the others, even in their household work or fishing. That's why we think schooling is important. But the mobile schools also face challenges. There are rarely qualified local teachers, and teachers from outside find it hard to integrate into the close-knit communities. Many parents are also complaining about new expenses. The arrival of the school has raised our expenses. Sometimes the children lose pencils and erasers, so we have to give them money to replace them. As the day comes to an end, the children return home to help with the household chores. The education they get out here will equip them with skills that many of their parents don't have and that will probably bring positive change to their community.